All right, I got my coffee. It's early in the morning. I'm ready to go, so let's do it. start off, first of all, I have to apologize. I haven't posted a video in so long. Why is that? One, I was a pretty busy summer. Two, over the last few weeks, I actually had some health issues and I was hospitalized, so that actually took a whole big deal of immune system regathering to get myself up and going. But before we begin, I also have some other announcements. Big changes have happened to this channel. I started this new playlist called the Science Fun Fact Playlist. It's called the Science bite-sized biology, and I try to share uh, fun facts about biology, fun facts about medicine in 30 to 45 seconds. So check that playlist out below. Second thing I want to tell you is that the free clinic that I work at, the free clinic that I work at on the weekends, it's called the Haven Free Clinic here. And um, every year we do a fundraiser where we do a 5K and we kind of host a 5K. Um, and in that 5K, I'm, all, I'm obviously going to be running it. But if you would like to donate to me or donate to the free clinic, that would be really great. A lot of the money that we get to run the free clinic comes from uh, donations from people like you who are willing to help out. So if you're interested in any of that, please donate. I never try to ask for money. None of my videos are monetized. But if anything, this is about as pure of a cause as there can be for our uninsured, undocumented um, people that live in the area that we take care of. It would mean a lot to me, mean a lot to the patients, and of course it would mean a lot to the community. So with all that being said, let's actually get to the funness of this video. What is this video about? Up till now, this this channel has been all about applying to medical school, the stuff before medical school, but now that I've done one year of medical school, I decided to reflect on five things that I wish I had known at the start of medical school that it really would have helped me. So I have this list I've made of five things, and trust me when I say it's really, really important, and I think it'll real be really helpful, and I'm going, gonna go, and maybe I'll make individual videos about each of these later on, but for now, this is just what it's at. So let's start. So the first one that I think is really important for any first year medical student to know is to be okay with uncertainty. Anyone who comes into medical school comes in having done well in undergrad and so if they feel the need to know everything, understand everything, you know, get to every detail. But the problem is medicine is so, so dense that regardless of where you start, there's going to be so many empty holes that you will not know how to fill in. You're going to like start learning about hematology and in hematology they might even mention like sepsis. And you'll be like, what's sepsis? Or like you might start learning about hematology and even in hematology they might mention an infection you don't know. Like the point is, wherever you start, there's going to be so many empty holes that there's nowhere for you to be cover all of them. So just be okay with that uncertainty. To a certain extent, be okay with just memorizing some facts now and learning about certain infections and knowing that you will come full circle eventually. But the point is, if you try to learn everything the moment it comes up in one unit, like let's say in hematology, I tried to learn about all the infections that were relevant or all this stuff, it just gets to be really overwhelming. And unfortunately, it can be just bad for your learning experience. So. To a certain extent, you have to be okay with the uncertainty, be okay that, okay, there's a lot of stuff out here that I don't know, but also understand that you will get to a point where you'll learn it, and at that point is when you can slowly start connecting the dots. But unfortunately, it takes a while, maybe six to eight months in medical school, to get enough dots to even connect. You know, like initially you might learn something here, and then you learn something here, and then you learn something here, 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 and eventually the dot starts connecting. Like, I'm, I'm starting to connect the dots now, and it's been a um, a year into medical school. And then to uh, kind of add on to that, in medical school you're going to hear about a lot of diseases. You're going to hear a lot about details. You're going to hear a lot about nomenclature. You're going to hear words like hemoptysis. You're going to hear words like sepsis. You're going to hear words like gram... Like all these words that you may not even know what they mean. You have to be okay with that uncertainty, as I just said. With all that being said, I think the general just is do not focus on the details. If you focus on the details, if you focus on every small thing initially, you'll get so caught up in the details that you will lose the big picture. It's much more important for you to have a big picture and then go back and then fill in those details. And I think that is really, really helpful. What is the second thing that I want to make sure every first year knows and I wish I had known? Med school isn't just about medical school anymore, it's about life. I think it's a misnomer to call medical school school because you're at the point in your life now where it should be called medical life. Because the decisions you make in medical school and the priorities you set out for yourself will ultimately come out in the way you live your life down in the future. If you let medical school consume you, you can study 20 hours a day, 7 days a week, and it still won't be enough because there's just so much stuff you have to know. So at that point, you really have to start prioritizing what's important to you. Are you someone who needs to work out every day? Are you someone who wants to make time for YouTube? Are you someone that wants to make time for social stuff? You know, you really have to get those priorities straight because those priorities can play a big role in the doctor you eventually will become. If you're working all the time now, 
residency is just going to get worse. So there's no way that if you don't have a balance now, you'll establish one in residency. So you really have to lay the foundations now and say, okay, I will work for this much, but when I'm working, I'm working, and I'm also going to make, I don't know, working out a priority, I'm going to make YouTube a priority, and I'm going to make hanging out with friends a priority. And that's all stuff you have to integrate in, and you have to cut your losses at some point. Some people will say, I don't want to do any of that. I want to study all the time, learn as much as I can, and in residency, I want to be the best resident possible. That's totally fine. You know, so all this stuff really comes down to medical school is not school anymore. It's life. There's going to be a lot of stuff thrown at you. There's going to be a lot of things that you have to balance. And of course, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's out of your control, like rupture your Achilles tendon, getting hospitalized. All of that stuff could happen to you, you know? And when that does, you have to understand, like, I'm not just in school right now. I have to face the, these ongoing uncertainties of life as well. And knowing that is absolutely important because it really helps you set this work-life balance and helps you understand that I'm in medical school now. But it is important for me to be doing other things. You know, I, I picked up cooking this summer. I tried to learn how to cook. I've been going to the gym every day. I go to the gym regularly. I set a lot of time aside for friends and social things because I think that's really important to me. I really love making those connections. And of course, YouTube and interacting with all of you is another priority for me. So I set different times and places for all of that and I try to make sure I have a balance of that because that's the type I want, of person I want to become moving forward. I want to make sure I have time for friends and family. I want to make sure I have time for this community. I want to make sure I have time to work out because those are all things that I value pretty deeply. And doing that now and setting those foundations now is is something that I'm thinking is going to really help me when it comes residency time and even attending time because that's the type of life I hope to live. You have to be okay with living life and doing medical school and understand that life will get in the way sometimes. That's what life is and you just kind of have to adjust and having that perspective will make it all the better for you when those things do happen. So now, third one. Third thing that I want every person to know starting medical school is to get to know the lay of the land of Anki. Anki is the flashcard app that most medical students use for long-term retention. It's actually been shown to be very good in this thing called um, space repetition. USMLE step one, USMLE step two, and being a doctor as a whole relies on you to remember things that you need to remember over long periods of time, and Anki is a great way to do that. Unfortunately, Anki has a really bad user interface in my opinion, and so that actually deters a lot of students from using it. But I heavily, heavily, heavily recommend any and all students in medical school to start using Anki because it really helps with space repetition, which helps you remember things over long periods of time. And two, it also, the number one thing that I think is really important about Anki is that there's pre-made decks out there that have been shown to work really well to prepare you for step one and step two and of course later on in life. Those decks include things like Zonky, those decks include things like Bros and Cephalon, they include things like I think Pepper. I use I use Zonky and Pepper but these pre-made decks you can download into Wonky and then you can slowly customize and make your own decks and use them to study. So that is the number one benefit of Anki. The fact that there's pre-made decks out there by people who have already killed the med school game that you can use to supplement your studying. I'm already Already using them and that saves you a bunch of times when you're studying for the boards. I use Anki a lot and it's been very helpful for me and because of that I think it's something that I would recommend to all students. I actually didn't pick up on Anki until January of my first year and I think I should have started way earlier just because the space repetition algorithm is really helpful. I'm gonna make a separate video on how to use Anki because there are so many things about Anki that you have to know. There's very un unique niches and nuances you have to understand and I'm gonna make a video about that. But with all that being said, there are, there are some great videos from Med School Insiders on how to use Anki, start, get started with those. I'll link some of those below. And once you learn how to use Anki as a whole, I'll also make a video next week or maybe the week after about how I study using Anki. With that being said, this is a subset of the third thing. Using Anki takes a lot of guts because you have to understand that consolidation is just as important as getting new information in medical school, if not more important. What do I mean by that? In med school, you're gonna be inundated with information. It's like drinking water out of a fire hose, as everyone says. But Unfortunately, because there's so much information, so many people get caught up in just trying to gather all that information, they want to get all their information, that they don't consolidate the information that already exists. And that is the number one trap I found myself falling into last year. I made almost like 8,000 flashcards for one of my units because there was so much information. And then when it came to like learning those 8,000, it was impossible. There was just so many. So I never consolidated because I was just so focused on learning everything. So now I make more concise flashcards. I make better flashcards. I make 100 to 200 flashcards, I don't know, I'd say a week, maybe even two weeks. And because of that, I get all this information and I use the space repetition algorithm consistently to get that information in my head and I keep that going from week one to week 10 of the block and by the time it's week 10 I know everything so well that the space repetition algorithms work and it's actually helped with long-term retention. So again, 
Three, there's two parts to tip number three. Use Anki, use it well. Two, when you use Anki, it's important that not just getting new information, but consolidating the information you already have, you do that every day. Almost every day I spend about two to three hours doing review cards, which are cards that are not new, cards that I have already made that I'm gonna review, and because of that, I spend those two, three hours just consolidating information, and then I spend, I don't know, two, three hours also love watching lectures, getting new information, and adding stuff on. Dan, this is gonna be a long video, but I actually have two more tips. All right, so tip number four is just the resources. There's a lot of resources out there for medical students, including Sketchy Micro, First Aid, Pathoma, USMLE, RX, Sports, and Beyond. There's just so much out there that can be overwhelming to even know where to start. What is my take on this? My take is once you find a resource that you like, stick to it, and that's it. Last year, I spent so much time switching between resources because I was just like, I don't know what works, I don't know what doesn't work, and it just gets to be really overwhelming. So I strongly recommend, you know, kind of test out those resources and see what you like and stick to it. Don't let anyone else's opinion change your mind. With that being said, I will tell you there are some gold um, gold standard resources that almost every medical student uses. This is the first, this is the USMLE first date. It's the gold standard for everything you need to know for the boards. Um, definitely use that. I highly recommend it. For pharmacology and microbiology, I recommend Sketchy Micro. Sketchy Micro is again this animated version where they kind of draw cartoons and help you create metaphors to remember things. Um, I'd say that's definitely the gold standard for microbiology and pharmacology. Pathoma is again the gold standard for pathology. Pathoma was created by a professor at U Chicago. Phenomenal person, phenomenal teacher, and that is the gold standard for all of pathology just because he goes over a lot of things in a very concise way and actually intuitively gives you reasons to remember it. Um, and so pathology, if someone doesn't know, pathology is how disease happens in certain organs. So uh, pathoma is a great way to learn pathology of all the different organ systems from cardiovascular all the way to like dermatology. And I found that to be very helpful. And the other resources like Boards and Beyond and I'd say like USMLERX, all of those are great. Again, if you like them, if you find them helpful, stick to them. Don't flip things around like I did. Just find something and stick to them. And obviously the lectures provided by your medical school and the medical school that anyone goes to are also great resources. There's just a lot out there. Point is, once you find something that works, stick to it. But to find something that works, you're going to have to explore. For me, it took, again, until January of my first year to see what worked for me and what doesn't. I'm a much more of a, um, a fast lecture person. I like videos. I actually am a big fan of like Dr. Najib, so I do those a lot too. So it really just depends on what you like and what you don't like. And um, I didn't get paid to like promote any of those. I will just say that those are the ones I use. And again, I'm giving you my honest feedback. Um, so those were my, that's my tip number four. Number five is probably the most important thing ever for a first year medical student to know. And almost everyone runs across this issue. And the, and the problem here is you're a medical student now. You're going to be learning a lot. You're going to be doing a lot. You're going to be changing lives. But as this happens, don't forget about the person you were before you got into medical school. This actually comes from one of my best friends here. Um, she and I talk a lot about, you know, just the amount of change medical school has on you, the amount it, it kind of like forces you to think a certain way, the amount it kind of forces you to start becoming this particular type of person. But at the same time, you don't want medical school to change the person that you came into medical school as. Uh, what does that mean? So in my case, you know, um, YouTube is a big deal for me. Being able to connect with other people was a big deal for me. And just because I'm in medical school and I have to be studying a lot all the time, does not mean I want to give up on those things. So I still continually do my YouTube thing. And I, as you know, on my Instagram, I consistently sh post photos of people I meet and I like to share with the world like these connections I'm making because look at those connections are really important to me. And of course, you know, like working out and running are big parts of my identity. And so just because I'm in medical school does not mean I throw those away. Uh, you want to hold those close to your heart because those are what those are things that make you who you are. Um, my best friend, she is really into the humanities, and even though she's in med school now, um, she's still finding a way to keep that in her life. So she's taking a writing class and like learning more about writing. Uh, there's people here who journal every day because journaling is really, really important to them. There's people here every day that write because they like to write, like literally just free space writing. Um, so again. Do not let med school take over your life. It's a lot. It's a huge responsibility. You're going to be saving people's lives and people trust you in the most vulnerable moments. But at the same time, you're your own person too. Uh, you're your own individualistic being. And the things that brought you into medical school were the things that the admissions community and even the school you're in respected uh, about you. And so there's no reason for you to give that up, even if that means, you know, studying a little bit less every week, if it means, you know, sacrificing a little bit of sleep to do those extra hobbies that you wanted, or even if it means sacrificing some uh, grades, you know, at the end of the day, you are who you are, and you're going to be more happy if you're pursuing what you love 
and you enjoy the type of person you become rather than you get inundated with all this knowledge and then you become a great knowledgeable doctor but at the same time you like lose sight of who you were to begin with so that, that's when burnout starts happening that's when you really start just um, losing sight of everything um, those are just some few things I learned I remember last year I had some tough times where I definitely was studying a lot and I was just like what am I doing I need to just go to the gym and I just stopped it and I went because I was like this is important to me this is something I need to do and believe it or not when I came back from the gym I was just so refreshed I gave it another like six hours of study and I killed it so remember what's important to you hold that close to you I still call my parents every day I still hang out with my family a lot I FaceTime my family a lot Though my family is a big part of my life, so I'm not just going to sacrifice that just because I have more studying. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a serious note to end on. But hopefully we covered everything from medical school resources to things to prioritize in medical school to the mindset you should have to Anki. And hopefully that was a great primer on some of the new videos I'll be making and also showing you how I study because I feel like I'm getting a lot more of that now. Some of you were wondering why I don't talk about med school as much. I don't like publishing videos on anything that I'm not an expert on yet. And having gone through one year of medical school, by no means I'm an expert, but I'm slowly starting to see what works, what doesn't work, how Anki works even, like all these small things, I'm figuring it out. And as I'm figuring it out, I'm just, I wanna like fine tune and make sure I know everything really well. So when I teach it to you guys, you know I'm reputable and you know that you can get the most out of it. So with all of that being said, first of all, please follow me on Instagram, Snapchat if you don't already. I love connecting with a lot of you. Some of you are already interviewing here at Yale Medical School and I meet a lot of you and I love that. So keep continuing to reach out to me if you're in the area. And if you're not, reach out to me with questions. I try my best to answer all of them. Um, second thing, please donate to the Haven Free Clinic, the link below. Donate to my page, trying to get $300. Again, it would mean the world to me. And last but not least, that Science by Ties playlist is a new project I'm starting. If you have any questions about science or medicine, let me know. I would love to publish like a 30, 40 second video on it and post it on my YouTube channel and even give you credit for helping come up with a question. So that's pretty much it. I know that was a lot, but thank you all for watching. I look forward to interacting with you consistently through live streams and hopefully meeting a lot of you as you end up coming to New Haven even or even in the Bay Area when I'm there. But with all that being said, thanks for watching. I know I've been away for a while. Thank you also for 6,000 subscribers. It means the world to me. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.